Hello guys, and today I'm going to be doing a Kerbal Space Program tutorial. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on getting to orbit and also an extra tutorial. Now, as you can see, I'm currently building a, a lander. Now, this will be more obvious later. It's actually pretty obvious seeing as probably the thumbnail. Probably the thumbnail or title, I don't know. But yeah, we're making a lander. And then we're going to be building a rocket. And then I'm going to be teaching you guys how to get to orbit in Kerbal Space Program 2. Yay! And also, by the way, I'm saying I'm doing this mission in Kerbal Space Program 2. It actually works in Kerbal Space Program 1. And I'm actually using all the parts I'm using are still in, are in Kerbal Space Program 1. So if you don't have Kerbal Space Program Specific Kerbal Space Program 2, then you can still do this mission in Kerbal Space Program 1. Just by the way. So, I'm building this lander. It's prob it's pretty obvious where it's gonna go. <laughs> seeing as I literally put it in the thumbnail. Let's now build a payload bay. And I'm pretty sure this is live. I, I, I didn't speed up the... Did I speed up the footage? I don't know at this point. That's just... I really don't know. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm trying to test out the cargo base. I decided to use a new cargo base, but... You can use fairings. I would actually recommend you use the fairings, because fairings are better. So yeah. Fairings are kind of superior when you think of it. So let's now add a decoupler. So, yes, nice decoupler. I feel like this is a little bit too slow. Whatever. We're now going to add a fuel tank, and so we're going to make our upper stage using the skipper engine. The skipper is a very good upper stage engine for when you use a middle-sized uh, fuel tanks. Then we're going to add a decoupler, and then we're going to add one large mid-sized fuel tanks and the mainsail engine. The main cell is probably the best lower stage engine when you use um, middle sized pieces. Because it's just really good. And I decided to make it black and silver because it looks pretty sleek. Though it also looks kind of stumpy. <laughs> it kind of looks a little bit stumpy and I tried to look at the, the lander thing. Yeah, I don't know. And now you just want to... Oop, I... <laughs> Oop, I made something wrong. Just click Control Z. Um, is it Control? It is Control Z to revert what you just did. You could you could just use the little arrows. I'm 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 using my mouse trying to show you, even though you guys can't see. But whatever, because after all, this is not live commentary. If you want live commentary, then go watch the first ever Kerbal Space Program 2 video I ever made, which is my first impressions. So we are now launching. First of all, I would recommend... Well, for my ship, if you use the same thing, use half thrust, because there's way too much power in this rocket, but maybe full thrust. So you want to point straight up until about 100 meters. And for that, from then, you want to tilt a little bit towards the 90 degree vector by pressing D and to tilt back you press A so press D to tilt that way as so you want to gradually tilt a little bit and just gradually tilt until about 10 kilometers once you're 10 kilometers you want to be tilted to about 45 degrees so but once you're at about 5000 meters I recommend you're about halfway there so about 22 degrees, about 25 degrees tilted. So just show, slowly do your gravity turn, tilt, tilt, tilt. Just, just click the D keys, and if you feel like your vessel is pointing a little bit back, then press A. And if it's going up, then press S. Or if it's going down, then press W. Actually, it's the opposite. <laughs> if you're going up, press S. If you're going down, press W. No going up press W if going down press S so now that we reach 10 kilometers we should now be pointing about 45 degrees you want to point 45 degrees until your apoapsis is about a minute away once you're a minute away from your apoapsis you want to start pointing prograde 
you could literally even use auto SAS to point prograde. But I wouldn't recommend you use auto SAS because sometimes prograde just moves a little bit too fast. But you want to tilt flatter and flatter to be tilt more and more towards the prograde marker. Oh, here we are. Let's go. And there we go. Our fuel is out, so press the space bar to stage. Now I put a communitron dish because I kept having problems with com network for some reason. Here you can see there was a cut because I actually reloaded a quick save, but for you what you should do now is basic just okay. continue pointing prograde. Now click SAS and see for some reason I've got no comnet connection. It doesn't make much sense. So I'm just flying weirdly but now but what you should be doing now is point prograde and turn your engine on but yeah for some reason it doesn't seem to work for me so this shouldn't be part of your mission but if this happens then just try to fix it I had to, I had to redo this mission several times because it kept glitching out see no comnet work so I tried and you're gonna see something in just a second will I be doing it? I don't know but point prograde turn your engine on until your apoapsis is about a hundred meters above the surface so I'm, <laughs> look at that look at that I'm literally trying my best to get it to work and then I realized I just had to like fold the antenna back and then fold it back and now it work so point prograde until your apoapsis is about a hundred kilometers. I would recommend a hundred kilometers. It's a nice round number, and it leaves a lot of room between the atmosphere and you. So yeah. So point prograde and burn till apoapsis is a hundred kilometers. So there we go. A hundred kilometers. I overshot and ended up with a hundred and seven kilometers. Sorry guys. <laughs> so yep. Now we're gonna go to the apoapsis and create maneuver node and then we're gonna pull on that prograde marker until both the periapsis and apoapsis markers start moving and then just look and they should be pretty closely aligned now wait until you leave the atmosphere like that they don't pr produce drag and now click on the auto SS part maneuver so yeah so click maneuver and then it will point towards the maneuver node. Finally, you want to time warp towards your burn. You could actually click the little time warp towards maneuver node button. Or do it any way you want. So we're now going towards our maneuver node. There we go. And then just burn. Burn at maximum, I guess. But why am I not burning? I think oh yeah I think I reached that moment and there we go we are now burning and stop burning and we've got a nice circular orbit and I'm just changing the camera modes to horizon just so it's nice and look at that nice orbit just click delete and there we go next part we're gonna deploy our lander and we're going to the moon yay we're going to we're doing a tutorial on going to the MUN too, a one-way MUN mission. So first of all you want to click set MUN as target and go to descending node, make a maneuver node on the descending node and then just pull prograde and retrograde down. You'll get a pretty good, you'll get a very good um, MUN encounter, like I don't, I don't know how to explain this. And also by the way I'm playing this in patch 1 of Kerbal Space Program 2, so yep. Just keep that in mind, patch 1 did add, did fix a lot of bugs, so yeah. Now just warp to maneuver node, and then just burn, I guess. <laughs> There's not really much to say about this at this point. And from then I just, I decided to speed up the footage a little bit, because at, at one point it was kind of, I think at one point like, it kind of gets boring. <laughs> so here we are now, burning. There we go, and we're gonna right click our periapsis to see our periapsis height, and by clicking, by pointing prograde and retrograde and alternating, you can get a pretty nice periapsis. I would recommend about 
20 to 30 kilometers height of your periapsis for the Mun and Minmus. So we will now deploy our lander. So yeah, there we go. The cargo base has been opened and deploy. There we go. And let's go. We are now time warping. Now, unfortunately, there will be debris, but I don't care at this point. Technically, it's actually fine because I could just you. There is a probe core, but I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. And we're now gonna deploy a communitron dish so we can have um maximal net com com net connection. We're not gonna get. We're not gonna talk about weird topics. So we're now just gonna warp towards the Mun. So there we go, warp, 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 time warp, I guess. So we're now entering the sphere of influence. First of all, you want to do a quick save, just in case. Again, you players, quick save, quick save, quick save. During this entire mission, you may not have heard it, but I, I kept on clicking the F5 button to quick save. I got a message apparently. Whoops. So now you want to make a maneuver node at your periapsis and pull back on the retrograde until you get a circular Mun orbit. So there we go. And a little bit of a disclaimer just to say I made this tutorial because I got a lot of comments saying they wanted a, a tutorial for getting to orbit. I did this tutorial, but really, you could just go into the in-game tutorials. I I saw they are pretty good. They aren't. They are, they are very good. They are very well done. So I would recommend. Maybe you maybe you watch this tutorial, but maybe you just like go to the in-game tutorials as extra, cause this isn't very good and like it's kind of rambly and weird. But yeah, just try to look at. Just try to use the in-game tutorials. It's probably better. So we're now doing our retrograde burn to get into a circular Mun orbit. Uh, there we go. Well, not perfectly circular, but whatever. Now you just want to save game again. <laughs> just save, save, save. It's, it's just save. It doesn't cost anything. I guess it costs time, but like, it's fine. And now time warp to the daylight side, cause why not? And then you want to do a retrograde burn to get a trajectory down to the surface. I actually decided to do a maneuver node just to know where I would land and yeah. So do that. And now just burn. Poof. Well, I didn't turn them on yet. So there we go. Ah. Uh, Burn is a burnt. I don't know what I tried to say it right here. But here we are now going down to the surface. Keep holding pro retrograde and and just keep burning um burning burn retrograde until you've got until your speed is zero meters per second. So there we go. It keeps I don't know what's happening. And so now I'm gonna burn retrograde because I want to land in this vicinity. So I'm doing this a little bit prematurely, but yeah, you can do it at any point. Just make sure I would recommend you start with this vessel. Don't start your um, retrograde suicide burn later than six thousand meters. Just just as a recommendation for new players. So here we are now coming down. So yeah, just slow your speed down, slow uh, down. How much time is there? Oh, one minute. Slow down, and this time I slowed down too much. So we ended up, yeah, we ended up, I don't know. We ended up like, oscillating. <laughs> so there we go, just, just slowly try to burn retrograde. Once you reach the surface. And for the man, I would recommend don't go, don't land faster than five meters per second. I usually land less than two meters per second. Usually about like one or even less than one meter per second, because it's kind of good practice to get very smooth and nice landings. 
but you also need to be careful not to go too much oh i bounced up and there we go i think 1.5 meters per second pretty good so there we go you are landed on the man congratulations you got to orbit and you landed on the man now we can just do our surface antics such as uh, deploying the solar panels and warping to the day side so congratulations you got to the man and into orbit and on the left hand side is a video for you on the right hand side is a playlist and don't forget to like and subscribe